How is the data stored inside EVM storage slots when we have a dynamic array of structs? For example, here I have a struct called point. Inside it, it has three fields, unit 256x, unit 128y, and unit 128z. And I also have a dynamic array of structs, a dynamic array of points, named R. In this video, I'll explain how the data is stored inside the EVM storage slot when we have a dynamic array of structs. Remember that in one of the previous videos, I mentioned that if you have a dynamic array and each element takes up exactly one slot, so this will be 32 bytes, you can think about it as a dynamic array of unit 256. And then the way we calculate where the slot of an element is, is by this equation. Take the catch 256 of the slot where the array is declared, plus the index of the element. For a dynamic array, we'll need to do something similar. The difference is, we'll need to consider the size of each struct. Here's our starting point, catch 256 of the slot where the array is declared. In this example, this is declared in slot 0, so we'll replace this with 0. And then for each element, we multiply by the amount of slots the struct will use. So let's count. Uint 256 will take up one slot. Next, we have two uint 128. The first one will take up 16 bytes, or half of the slot. One slot uses 32 bytes. And then the next one will use up the other half of 16 bytes. So these two fields will be stored in slot 2. This will be stored in the first slot, and this will be stored in the second slot. So to get the slot of the element in this example, the slot of the element will be equal to the catch 256 of 0 times the size of the element. Each element is a point, so it will take up two slots. Size of element times the index of the element. Okay, let me give you some examples. First, I'll put some data into this dynamic array. I'll push three elements. Next, let's write a function to get the data that is stored in this dynamic array. I'll name this test struct r. For the input, it will take in a single input, the index of the array to get, uint 256i. For this example, we will return four outputs. The data that is stored in each struct, so this will be xyz, and the length of this dynamic array. So we have uint 256x, uint 128y, uint 128z, and the length of the array, uint 256 length. So we will apply this equation, so I'll copy this equation, and then paste it here. Let's start with this part. Bytes 32, I'll name it start, is equal to check 256 of abi.encode. You'll need to encode uint 256 of 0. 0 is the slot where this dynamic array is declared. Next, we'll use assembly to read the data. Assembly. Let's start with the length of this dynamic array, then. We call that the length of the dynamic array is stored in the slot where this dynamic array is declared. In this example, the dynamic array is declared in slot 0. So the length will be stored in slot 0. S load 0. Okay, next let's get the values x, y, and z. So we have the fields x, y, and z inside the struct point. The first slot will be occupied by x since it is unit 256. The next slots will be occupied by the field y and z since they are both unit 128. The way they will be stored will be y starting from the right and going left. And then to the left of this, we'll have the value z stored. So this is how the data is stored inside slots for each element. These two data take up two slots. To access the value for x, let's say x is equal to, we'll need to apply this equation. First, I'll type s load, then add to start. This start will be the catch up to 56 of 0. We'll need to add the size of the element multiplied by the index of the element. So, more, the size of the element is 2. Each struct will take up two slots to store x, y, and z. Then we need to multiply this by the index of the array element that we want to access. This will be i. And this is how you will get the value x. The next slot will store z and y. So let's call this let z and y equal to s load add start. And then instead of doing multiply 2 by i, to this value we need to add 1. So first I'll copy this, paste it here. And to this we need to add 1, add 1. 
Okay, so this will load 32 bytes that represents the value Z and Y. 16 bytes will be Y and the other 16 bytes will be the value Z. Inside assembly, this Z, Y is 32 bytes. And to get the value Y, we need to get the right side of the 16 bytes. And to do this, all we have to do is assign the value Z, Y. And this works because when this Z, Y, 32 bytes is casted into U into 128, the left side of the 16 bytes will be cut off and we're left with the right side of the 16 bytes. Okay, and to get the value Z, since Z is on the left side, we will need to shift Z, Y by 16 bytes to the right. 16 bytes is 128. So shift right, 128, Z, Y. Okay, let's try compiling this contract and then call the function test struct R. Okay, control S, contract compiles. Let's now deploy this deploy and then let's try getting the zeroth element and we get that x is 11 y is 22 z is 33 which you can see over here and the length of the array is 3. let's try getting the other two elements the first index 44 55 66 and the last element 77 88 99 